The Tight Five. And he's going to be one of the topics in the Tight Five, and especially that incredible goal that he scored against Australia. Uh, the Black Caps capitulation, as bad as it ever gets last night, and as close as we're going to get in this test match, we can't just we can't just paper over that. I think it's really important because that to me is the tale of this test match. Warriors yesterday, keep fighting, promising resilience. That's the Warriors promising resilience. Okay. We've heard all this before, have we not? How is it going to be different under Andrew Webster? You can get an app these days that tells runners when their running shoes are nearly at the end of their life cycle. I'm not joking. Okay, what are we coming to as a world? But let's kick it off with Grant Turner passing away. GT, as he's known. Uh, GT, Grand Touring, Gran Turismo, GT Grant Turner. Um, and that's why he got the nickname, because growing up in the 70s, of course, the GT was a, a kind of a hot rod form of a car. Like, if you got a Falcon GT, you were the money kind of thing, right? Anyway, <clears throat> this man was just 64 years young. Duncan Cole passed away, took his own life a few years ago. He was the first of that 81-82 squad to leave our mortal coil. Now, a very sad day, indeed, very, very sad. And now Grant, who had battled cancer for a long time. A difficult guy to get to know, unless you did know him. Ricky Herbert's going to talk about this. He didn't really have a lot of time for a lot of people, Grant. And when he played for the All Whites, believe it or not, Lachlan, he had a tattoo on his chest, F the police. Can you believe that? Really? Yeah. What? What? Crazy, eh? So whatever went on in his life at an early age, something, wires got misplaced, crossed, whatever. He was an angry young man. Um, And he started playing football. um, A very big personality down in Tauranga. And then he appeared for the All Whites. And as a kid, I was 17, 18 watching this, just this guy epitomised everything you wanted in a player playing for your team. You know, he he was our Roy Keane. He was box to box. He was hard. He took no prisoners, tackled like an absolute... He tackled like Jerome Kano and scored crucial goals. I think, what, 19 goals in about 70 games for for New Zealand for the All Whites, which is incredible considering that he wasn't an attacking midfielder. Mm. Uh, A real loss. Um, I just wish that a lot more people who love football in this country had had have got to see him play. And the big regret is that he never played the 82 World Cup because he got injured in like the last warm-up match mm. and he missed the tournament. And I think we would have been a much better team in that tournament with him. Not an easy guy to replace in the team. So we've lost Steve Sumner, of course, 63 years old, died of cancer. We've lost Duncan and now we've lost an, another young one. Gone way too early. I wish you were around at the time to be able to have the same kind of memories that I have. Yeah. Well, I, I have um, none. Zero. Because yeah. I was negative 15 years old yeah. when that um, yeah. World Cup was on. And after the World Cup, after 82 and all of that, he just he kind of just, he, one of those guys, you didn't want the limelight, he just kind of yeah. quietly slipped, 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 yeah, away. slipped back into, uh, into what he was doing. But rest in peace, Grant Turner. Okay. I was angry last night watching the Black Caps. And I suppose that's a good thing because if you get emotional watching sport, it means that you actually care about it. But the way we threw that position away... You don't wrestle 455 for five on the back of what was a captain's knock by Kane Williamson for the incumbent captain to come in and just toss his wicket away willy-nilly like he did Tim Southey. Mm. And I know that these questions won't be asked at the press conference because they're very difficult questions and it takes a certain kind of person to sit there and I suppose the world would be antagonised. You know, we sat there with Sean Johnson yesterday and there are many questions you want to ask but when you're actually live in front of a person and the atmosphere is not kind of like that, you know, I've been to press conferences where they get pretty prickly. I was at that one, obviously, in 2019 when Andrew Gordy from TV3 and Steve Hansen had a crack at each other about yeah. whether or not the All Blacks were playing with heart. Yeah. Um, and they can get pretty ugly. And, you know, the thing is, I think that this Black Caps team needs honest questions put to it because you, you can't paper over what happened last night. What happened last night was amongst the worst I've ever seen of any New Zealand cricket side. That last about 40 minutes or 50 minutes. Bracewell's run out, Southie's wicket. What the hell are you guys doing? Do you care about playing for your country or not? Yeah, Bracewell's one was the most frustrating. Um, because it felt like he just didn't care. Yeah. Yeah. He it was jogged, jogged down the wicket. And there was no urgency. It was strange to watch. For what, someone who's an tired? international athlete representing their country to be that relaxed... In a tense moment of a test match where you've actually put yourselves in a strong position, thanks to Kane Williamson's knock. I think Blundell does do some credit. He yeah, did quite well. Yeah. So he ended up with 90, I think. But do you know what we did yesterday? We finally 
we finally managed to physically wrestle them down. They weren't the Johnson out, cocksure, swaggering England side that we have seen since Brendan McCullum took over. All of a sudden, they looked ordinary yesterday in the field. You know, they looked dispirited is what they did. Because I think... You've got to take advantage of that. Yeah, when, when they're under this new sort of style, um, or, uh, they're used to not only scoring runs quickly, but dispatching the opposition quickly as well. They take wickets quick. It's not like that they let the opposition slog out day after day after day. No. And so I think when we actually found a way to wear the bowlers down and just defend a lot more shots, I mean, Kane's, Kane was on about 70 after 200 it was a balls or perfect something. perfect test cricket yeah. innings because it's about attrition. So when exactly. Keeping you out in the field. And it was, a, it was a situation they weren't used to, or at least in recent memory had it been used to. So I think that's when they got a bit tired. They um, Maybe their mindset was just all over the place. And we, to our credit as well, Sort of found our way back into the we match. Did. We wriggled our way back. We actually had an opportunity to turn the screw. Another 50 runs. If they were facing another 50, if they needed right now, instead of 61, they needed 120 or 130. Yeah. And after five wickets down for 80, if they were facing, instead of 150 or whatever it was, they were facing 230 from that point, that would have been an amazing last day because would they have gone for it or would have they have shut up shop? For the first time, could we have seen the England cricket team go, oh, we'll just bat out a drawer and yeah. not lose here, yeah. you know? Yeah. And that would change the whole narrative about this fancy-dancy, swashbuckling, bears ball side. And we blew it. We threw the opportunity away. Warriors yesterday keep fighting, promising resilience. Look, it's easy to be convinced when you're standing up at a presser like we were yesterday with Adam Fanua Blake, and we'll bring you that interview he's tomorrow, and Sean huge. Johnson, he's a big boy, all right? He's not as tall as I thought, but far Man, out. Man, he's as wide as he is tall, huge. isn't he? Um... Okay, what makes you think, and we had to leave before Andrew um, Andrew Webster spoke, and we've, we've interviewed him before, of course, and he's a very impressive man, but what gives you any idea at all that things are going to be different this year? Uh, the coach, that's it. So, um, Andrew Webster, we've, we've said this a number of times on the show, he is a guy who, at least on face value and by the way he talks and the way that others talk about him, he is a very intelligent operator. He knows the game incredibly well, but he knows how to set high standards. I, 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 I mean, you can get, someone like Stephen Kearney knows the game really well. You know, someone like Jason Taylor, who coached the Tigers and Parramatta, I think he might have coached Sales, he knows the game well. Nathan Brown, all the every coach at this level knows the game. It's about how you uh, tap into another stratosphere, if you will, of coaching and getting the best out of your players. And I, I, I don't know, you just get a feeling from some people. I get that feeling from Angie Webster. I just, yeah, just I, you know, and yeah. I think especially when you've been in that Penrith environment and you've, you've been part of a winning team for a couple of years, you've worked under a very good coach in Ivan Cleary, you've you're worked around used champion to losing. players. That's the thing, yeah, you're, not... you're not used to losing and you know ways to win and you'll do anything to make sure that you win. Now, the Warriors don't have, I was thinking about this yesterday when I got, when I got home from work actually, because one thing I keep saying is the Warriors have some nice new squad players, they've got a new coach who I have a bit of faith in, um, but every other team's in the same boat. So many other teams outside the eight have wanted to get back into it, but have me, uh, more resources. Your Broncos, your Bulldogs, uh, Manly, whatnot, <laughs> the Titans. But the thing is, people last year said the Cowboys would get the wooden spoon. Mm. And I s thought that, no, they'll be better. They won't make the up, but they'll be better because I really like Todd Payton. And they proved to be... Remember when we spoke, when, when we spoke to him? We spoke to him, yeah. And we spoke was, to him. And it was all about the pre-season, remember? What all he said? about pre-season. Yeah, crazy, eh? And so... They came third in the table, were one win away from a grand final. No one saw it coming. So I'm not saying that Andrew Webster's Todd Payton, but when you've got the right coach and a decent playing group, well, there's nothing to suggest mm. the Warriors can't make the A. Okay, well, there's a couple of texts that are coming. I'm going to read those shortly. 5050, the platform on the text. Quick question for you, since we're watching Test Cricket and we care about Test Cricket. <laughs> Who won the last T20 Men's Cricket World Cup? The one last year. Who won the last one? Well, there was one la last who, year. Who won it? The Men's World Cup. England. Who'd they beat? Pakistan, because they beat us in the semi. Who did? Pakistan beat us? Yeah, and then the year before we and lost. Who did, and who did England beat? Uh, India. See, isn't this amazing? It, it, that's exactly right. Okay. And then last, and the year before, there was one as well, oh, and then Aussie we won. lost to Australia in the okay. final. I just, I, there was just, I, it's just that there's slight hesitation there. You did have to remember, it was only months ago. It was only about three months ago, Okay. That it doesn't stick in our memory, does it? It doesn't stick in but our memory. I don't memory. like T20 cricket. Finally then, mate sent this in a text. He says, Mark, did you know that you can now get an app that tells runners when their running shoes are nearly at the end of their life cycle and you need to replace them? 
Has the world gone stupid? <laughs> who's who's more stupid? Somebody that invents that app or somebody that downloads it. Yeah. If your eyes can't see that your shoes are stuffed and you have to replace them, is this what we've turned into now? <laughs> I'm going to tell you a story. I'm sorry, but this is just this to me is just as ridiculous as it gets. You know those um, those self-operating vacuum cleaners? You can get the little circles that you just turn on and they move around the house on their own. We got one of those in our flat the other day. And my one of my flatmates and I quote said he was really looking forward to it because he can't be asked vacuuming his on his own. And then I get home yesterday from work and he's turned it on for it to, you know, I get home and it's all nice and clean and vacuum. I'm like, oh gosh. But it wasn't, it goes home, it goes back to its charger on its own when it's done and it wasn't back at its charger. It's like, where the heck is this thing? Anyway, I go into my room, put my bags down to get changed and the thing's mounted on my, my room office chair and on the leg of it and it's eaten up one of my charging cords for my Apple Watch. What was it doing? Just humping the chair? Well, it, it, it malfunctioned. It caught up something in there and then it gone up on the chair and then it just stopped. I'm just... I'm just <laughs> thankfully, it didn't ruin the cord. My point of saying that is, yeah, people just get lazy. Why do you need an app? Why what, do you need an app to do, tell why, you? Why do you need an app to tell you? What, do you need an app to tell you that your underpants smell, that your socks stink, that you well, need to change your shirt? What does you smell it? Unbelievable! Oh. Incredible! The platform. You're always going to smell it and think it actually smells better than what it really smells because it's your own scent. 199 for five then. They're just cruising it now. English.